Hi guys, I hope you're all well. Long time no see, as obviously I've not done any vlogs at all this year so far and we're nearly in March, but it's just because I've been taking a while to prepare this vlog and I've been busy with so many different things, but I'm here now and my mental health, I've struggled with that as well, but I'm feeling a lot better now. So today I'm going to be doing a vlog on how to get through hard times. I'm just going to give like some tips or advice on how to get through times that are stressful in your life. Whatever you may have failed an exam, maybe someone died that you love, maybe you're just going through mental health struggles or you don't know what you want to do with your life, just anything that's going on in your life that you're finding hard, how to get through a fallout, whatever it is. I hope this blog can help you guys get through those hard times and find like coping strategies in order to like get through those times. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this blog and make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more content. Let's go. So as you guys know, well for those of you who like follow me on Instagram anyway, will know that the last couple of years have been quite difficult for me. Um, obviously, as you guys know, my dream was to go to, was to study psychology and like do a job in the psychology field, but obviously I started struggling with psychology in HNC and then I had to end up dropping to 12 credits, so I couldn't do that anymore. So it felt like my dream was over, I didn't know what I wanted to do because I focused myself so much on psychology, I was like really lost and stuck because I did social science for like three years solid and that was what the field of study I wanted to go to was psychology. There was no other subjects that I loved as much as psychology and counselling and obviously I needed psychology to do counselling for the most part so it was like what did I do? So it kind of made me feel lost for the last couple of years and obviously last year I volunteered and I loved that experience and now I'm working part-time and I'm also quite enjoying that experience like it's not been it's been pretty good I've not my mind is that actually, but that's not what the vlog's about anyway, but it's like, yeah, I've, I've, it's been really difficult the past couple of years just because I've been feeling lost and not being sure what to do because it's made my mental health decline a wee bit and because I took so long to find a paid job I was starting to run out of money so that was making it hard for me as well. Um, now I've got more money so I'm feeling happier now. I'm not saying money brings happiness but it can make you feel a lot, a lot less stressed when you've got money and you know you can like do things and actually live your life in a way you know um i think this summer will be a lot better because i'll have more money and be able to have like more fun in that see the world from my eyes a bit more but yeah um that's kind of what has been happening the past couple of years my dream not working out so it's left me quite stressed and lost and confused and all these feelings which a lot of people my age do go through so I'm, i know i'm not alone in this but it can be a lonely feeling sometimes as an autistic person, I do sometimes get too attached to things sometimes. I have like special interests, things I love. Like for example, when I was in school, I got really stuck to the idea of doing cake deck. And I still love baking, don't get me wrong, I still do it. But the reason this passion didn't work out is I didn't like the idea of waking up at like 4am making cakes in the morning because that would have taken a lot. And I'm not the best with like my time management, even though I'm good at baking, I'm good at decorating side, I'm not the best with managing my time. And you need to be able to manage your time when you're in a bakery and be able to like do the skills at a decent speed, which I wasn't good at. So like I knew a practical subject, I wouldn't be able to keep up with that. Um, but yeah, I'm the type of person who gets too attached to things and when I get attached to something, I can't get away from it. And then I feel upset and crushed when it doesn't work out. It's like I look too much into the future rather than enjoying the moment. And I'm trying to get to the point where I'm going to try and enjoy the moment. Like the job I'm in just now, I'm trying not to think too much in the future. I'm just going to like focus on one thing at a time and like just, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And just like take each day as it comes. Um, I'm working on my hobbies and so now, writing, I'm working on my autism book, which I'm really excited to bring out. Hoping that can come out in April, but we shall see because I've got a lot of content to write in it and it's going to be a very long book. So, and much longer than the last two, by the way. It's, gets quite deep at points but I think you're all gonna love it. I think it's gonna be amazing. Um um not everyone's gonna love it. Maybe that's me being like cocky, but I think some people are gonna like it. <laughs> and then um I love to read. I do autism content, I film blogs, I do all this kind of stuff. So I have lots and lots of hobbies I enjoy doing. But whenever my dreams work out I always feel crushed and devastated and all that. But when you feel devastated it's like you're holding on to the past. I want to look more into the future and think, right what can I do with it now? You know what I mean? But, yeah. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> like, I, I would just love it if I was that type of person that that one thing that I loved right just worked out and that was it. That would be the thing I do for all my life. 
But then someone told me actually at college, they said the most interesting people are the people who do who change from subject to subject because the thing is if they're like doing so many like different things they have so much knowledge so someone who was on the chase for example with all that range of knowledge would get more questions right over that person that just had knowledge in one field because you made various knowledge for like these quiz shows for example that's just one example and that's more of a fun example you know what i mean but like it's good to be knowledgeable in different parts in life because it kind of like I just, I don't know, it's just really nice to like have knowledge in lots of different fields rather than just the one field. It can be quite a cool thing, so I'm trying to think, I have so many interests, I have so many passions. Like, I love to play games, I'm playing my Mario Wonder game at the moment, I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> I like makeup, I like doing my nails, I like baking, I like cooking, I like reading, I like writing stories, I like going on walks, I like exercising, I like going out with my friends. Yeah, I basically like doing everything, so, well maybe not everything, but I like a lot of things, so it's like, it's good to have like lots of different passions because it makes you like more of a creative person in a way, like I'm very creative, I like to use my imagination, where I love creative writing and that, so yeah, I just think it can be a good thing to like be that type of person who likes a lot of different things, it can come in quite handy. But anyway, I've talked enough. I'm going to now talk about all the tips of advice and how to get through a hard time. Number one is to avoid like anything like alcohol, drugs, you know, just anything that would like make you feel worse. Because like in the short term, alcohol and drugs and things like that help you. They relieve the stress, but then long term, they really do they'll make you think about more. Whenever I drink alcohol, I think about things that are going on in my life even more deeply. Like, for example, I was really stressed about something at college once, like an argument that happened or something. And then when I met my friends, I thought, this is great, I can have all this alcohol and it'll take my mind off everything. It was completely the opposite. I drank and I started thinking all about it and I started to feel quite annoyed and angry. Um, not to my friends, but on the inside, it was angering me. It was weird, but like... Yeah, alcohol definitely doesn't help in the long term. It might be good for short term, but obviously things being good in the short term isn't going to be helpful. So definitely try to avoid things like alcohol and drugs because they won't do any good in like the long term. Instead, you're much better to do things like drink water and eat healthy and things like that because it'll just make you like feel so much better in the long term. Um, and you're more likely to think positive thoughts rather than thinking of everything bad that's going in your life to a higher level, which isn't always a good thing. So yeah, just like try and stay away from alcohol and drugs or at least like limit alcohol, you know, like just be careful and things like that. Number two, talk to someone you love and trust. This could be a friend, a family member, a teacher, a work colleague, whoever it is, just someone you trust and love. And for all you know, that person may be going through a similar thing to you and they be, may have been suffering alone in silence. So they might be thinking, oh my God, like you're going through the same thing as me. And then at that point you can help each other. You can like be there for each other and talk to each other and everything. So I think it's really good to like speak to someone because in situations like that you realise you're not alone and that people are always like willing to help obviously some people may not have many people in their life to go to and I understand situations like that it'd be really hard but even if you just find that one person you can trust and love you could like talk to them and they can like help you get through that hard time even if it's just like an, someone to lis that listens to you you know what I mean because sometimes it's good just to have someone to, that someone that will actually listen to what you're going through rather than like giving you lots and lots of advice and making you feel overwhelmed on the spot so it's definitely good to like speak to someone about your anxieties and stresses and all that um it helps you feel less alone and makes you feel like less negative and just happier and that like because it's always good to ask for support it's like one of the most like powerful things out there it's like asking for support and it's actually a strength to ask for support so it's always a good thing to do. Number three, I think this is a really important one. Be kind to yourself throughout the hard time. I know how hard it is to be nice to yourself when things are happening. Um, Say for example, if someone's died in your family and you're just really stressing about it and thinking, what could I have done? What could I have done? And chances are there was nothing you could do and it's just out of your control. So just be kind to yourself because this helps with the healing process. It'll make you feel so much better in the long run and 
being horrible to yourself is just going to make you feel even worse about that hard time. Well, be nice to yourself. It will help you with that hard time and help you get through it that wee bit easier. So always be kind to yourself, no matter what you're going through. And this is definitely important advice to myself because I'm often quite nasty to myself during bad times. Um, I can often beat myself up for minor mistakes and things that have happened in my life, but I'm trying to get to a point where I'm realising if I don't say that, if I didn't want to say that, like if, it, if I was saying something to myself that I wouldn't say to someone else and I shouldn't be saying, I wouldn't say to someone else and I shouldn't be saying to myself because like for example you wouldn't say to another person, oh you're a horrible person, so you wouldn't say it to yourself, oh I'm a horrible person, you know what I mean, so just be nice to yourself and treat yourself like a human, treat yourself the way you'd like treat others, you know, like nicely and kind because you don't want to bully yourself because that's just as bad as like bullying someone else because you're a human too, you're, you're just as important as everyone else. Number four, make sure you're looking after your health fully, make sure you're getting a good sleep at night, make sure you're eating well, even just trying to get fresh air, just even if you're just going for a light walk or just even go out in the garden and just sit down, just little things like this can really help with your mental health and well-being, like it could just, it just relief stress when you're getting, because you're going to feel a lot more agitated if you're not looking after your health properly and you're, it's going to make yourself feel a lot more stressed, but if you're looking after your health properly, you'll feel happier and you'll feel you'll feel just a little bit less of course you'll still feel stressed and anxious about the hard time you're going through but at least it will help like when I when my HNC was going badly and I was struggling and my psychology wasn't going well I was starting to like lose out on sleep because of overthinking constantly throughout the night and I was starting to skip meals and it was making me feel really grumpy and even more stressed out and it was just I got to a point where I just I felt I was suffocating, I felt terrible, you know what I mean, so don't do that to yourself, you sacrifice your health that much, it could even come to a point where you end up in hospital or something, I know that sounds really deep, but it can come to that if you're not careful, so please make sure you're looking after your health and putting yourself first, because it's so important, if you don't put your health first, you won't be able to like look after anyone else or do anything else for yourself, you know, so just yeah, look after yourself and make sure you put your health as the number one priority. Number five, do things you love to get your, yourself away from those stressful times. Like, for example, you could like chat to a friend or on video call, you could like bake something, you could like go for a walk, whatever makes you feel happy. Like when I, when I finished my HNC and I was feeling a bit depressed because I couldn't find a job because I was struggling to find jobs that were suitable for me, I decided to like do, to like work on my hobbies, so I would blog, I'd do autos and posts, I tried to like stick to my hobbies as much as I can to get away from those hard times, I'd try and meet up with people, I'd meet up with my boyfriend a lot, I'd do things with my family more, so I'd just try and like do like, like nice relaxing things, I'd make sure to give myself things to look forward to so that I wasn't feeling like really rubbish all the time, you know what I mean? So it's just, so just definitely try and continue doing the things you enjoy because this can take your mind off the hard times and make you feel that bit better, you know what I mean? It's a stress reliever really, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's important to like like do things you enjoy for your mental well being. Even if it's just like watching a film or something like that. It doesn't have to be anything like major, but just doing things that make you happy and yes, yeah, it is really important for your well being and for yourself. Number six, don't ignore your emotions. Like if you're feeling really, really upset express those emotions, feel those emotions, because it's really, really important to get through that hard time. The only way you're going to get through the tough time is by acknowledging that emotions. For example, my psychology didn't work out and I was suffocating inside. I was trying to pretend that I was happy all the time and that my HNC was going well, but it really wasn't. And it made myself feel more stressed in the long term when I kept being happy all the time. But if I ignored knowledge straight away that I was struggling and I was stressed out, I could have got help way quicker and I could have got through that anxiety and stress quicker and I could have maybe even achieved my psychology, you know what I mean? So it's important to acknowledge the emotions because if you don't, it's going to make it harder to get through those hard times in the long run. Like, for example, if like something's really stressing you out, it's really important to like tell that person because you tell them, you could get through it together and they could help you and then after like a few days you could be over it. Well, if you don't tell that person, you could be stressing about it for months or even years to come because you haven't acknowledged it. 
and you haven't told anyone, you just pretended to be happy, you can't get through that emotion. So you're holding on to that emotion for like most of your life, even, you know what I mean? So it's really important to acknowledge emotions so you can get through them in a healthy way. Because like it's always good to be happy and positive, but there isn't such thing as toxic positivity. You don't want to be smiling happy all the time when you're not actually feeling that way. Because if you do that, it'll get to a point where you just won't be able to cope anymore. And yeah, and you just won't be able to get through those emotions and you just suffer alone inside. And that's not good. It's not healthy. So always acknowledge your emotions. Let yourself be upset. It's, nat it's, it's natural as humans not to be happy all the time. We have times where we're sad, times where we're angry, times where we're happy, times where we're jealous, times where we're like fearing something. It's normal. We all have emotions. The film Inside Out portrays us that perfectly, that we all have different emotions. Riley was all happy. She was on her hockey team. She was living in a brilliant home. Then she moved house. She ended up in a new school. Of course she was going to be anxious about that. So that's why she got really emotional. She was missing all her old friends back in her old hometown. It it got so much for her that she escaped in a bus, you know what I mean? That's normal. But the reason she ended up getting that stress was because she didn't properly acknowledge those emotions because her parents, I think her parents wanted her to like just be happy, but like, and they realise, oh, you can't be happy all the time, you know what I mean? Because her parents were like, because her dad was like, oh, you're usually a happy girl and all that, but it showed that she can't be happy all the time. You have to have times where you're sad and... It's just important to express those emotions, is it? Number seven, don't dwell on the past. I know it's easy to think back to the past and think, what could I have done better? What could I do to like, like, what could I have done better to make, to like, make it better today? Like, I'm really disappointed in what I did back then and all that. It's okay to address the past, but don't dwell on it as a difference. Like, you can address what went wrong and how you could fix that for the future, but to like, dwell on it and think, I should, have, I should have done that back then, do this, and just overthinking it. It's no good to overthink these things. Like, I'm the type of person who's really bad at dwell in the past. Like, for example, as a Dedanian one day, I'm absolutely devastated. My psychology didn't work out. Like, I'm just absolutely crushed about it. And Dedanian says, that word is quite toxic because it's like you're dwelling on the past rather than looking to the future. Like, you could say something like, okay, psychology didn't work out, which wasn't what I was hoping for but I've got a whole future ahead of me and lots of amazing things that are going to come for me and that's like a good way of thinking of it you know what I mean because it's okay to be disappointed and to address that but not to like constantly like think about it and like stress yourself out about it like completely so yeah don't dwell on the past think about the future um well not think too much of the future you'll stress yourself out there as well but like just think of all the amazing things that could happen in the future and like like the future needs you the past doesn't that's one of the sayings is it so yeah just like think positively well obviously address the emotions but don't yeah but just don't dwell on the past um, yeah because there's no point you know what I mean the past is over and done with there's nothing you can do about it. you can't fix the past but you can fix the future you can make your future better you know so, because dwelling on the past is not going to make the hard times better. Like, for example, if a hard situation happens because of something you ha that happened in your past, you can't fix that. Like, for example, I overstudied my HNC. I did it almost up to 12 hours of studying a day and really stressed myself out. I look back and I think, God, I shouldn't have been studying that much. That's terrible. I shouldn't have done that. I should go back and fix that. But I can't go back and fix that. You know what I mean? But the way I could phrase it is, I really annoyed that I studied that much back then, but in the future, I will study less. I'll make sure to give myself good breaks and make sure I have time for my hobbies and friends, all that kind of stuff. So it's just about like, like looking into the future and now, like focusing on the now rather than thinking back to the past and trying to find a way to fix it because you can't fix it, you know. If you're like feeling anxious before you go to bed and you're really overthinking, you can't sleep. So this is number eight. So basically what I'd say is like write down all your anxious and stressed up thoughts into a notepad or a journal and then you've got it all there in front of you and then you've got it, you've let go of it. It's not inside of you anymore. It's on paper. So you let go of those thoughts. It's good to kind of like write down your thoughts and how you're feeling on paper and that way you'll sleep better and you'll feel better and all that. Because I find every time I write, it's like a huge stress reliever for me. It's like I've got all the emotions out on paper 
so I know how I'm feeling. And this also helps if you need to like ask for support, if you don't, don't know what support you need, then if you write it down, say for example, I'm really anxious about this exam tomorrow because I really need this to do this so-and-so subject. And then that way it's up right down, right down on paper. And then you could like ask someone for support, whether it's your family or friends. So it's really important to like, it's good to write things down because it's there in front of you and then you know what you're working with and even just for your your own good you know what I mean just for you to look at and think right this is how I'm feeling just now how can I get through this hard time so writing and journaling it definitely helps it's such a powerful thing and I highly recommend it as someone who's like really into writing so these are like eight tips of, that I think that are best for getting through a hard time. I'm sure there are ways you can get through a hard time as well and there are tips that I've missed out but these are the ones that I could think of and I think they're all like really good and helpful um, and I hope it helps you guys as well. Um, Just remember to always be kind to yourself during a hard time and to really look after your mental health and just like just treat yourself like a human like the way you treat other people you know what I mean just Remember, the hard times will never be there forever. Okay, like, you may, you will always remember them and all that, but just try and remember that everyone goes through hard times and it's something we all go through. No one's happy all the time. Even the people who look most happiest go through hard times. It's totally normal. Um, No one can be happy all the time. No one can have good days all the time. We all have bad days as well, but just, like, remember it's okay to go through a hard time. And, um... This year I'm working on my mental health, I'm taking, I'm, I'm like staying off social media more, I'm turning my phone off more, I'm just seeing the world more through my eyes and focusing more on my hobbies rather than worrying about work and things like that. Just like, just small things like this I think that help in the long run, you know what I mean? So this year is a year to look after my health and like get myself back on track after a couple of years of stressing because my dream didn't work out and everything, but I'm trying to get over it and a good positive way you know but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this blog and yeah um yeah i'll see you guys for my next blog whenever that'll be um i'm not good at doing blogs these days but you know i'm sure there'll be one again soon bye for now